Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Little Podcast. My name is Julia and I am coming to you as always from Munich in the south of Germany. Today is Saturday, it's the 9th of November 2019, which is crazy, when did it suddenly become November? Um, and this is my knitting podcast. I knit, I spin, although I don't have much spinning to show you guys at the moment, but I am still spinning. And yeah, that's what we'll be talking about today. So today I will be talking about some finished objects, some works in progress. And because once again, I have not been buying yarn. Um, I have some project planning in mind. If you're watching for the very first time, welcome. I really hope that you will enjoy this podcast and a big hello to all of you who are recently um, subscribed or just generally newer viewers of the podcast. Hi. And if you've been watching for a long time, thank you of course so much for coming back. Um, yeah, should we just jump in? Maybe one thing before we get started. Last week I did a bit of a sock review which wasn't the first time that I did that, but it was the first time in a while. And a lot of you guys said you were interested in doing something similar with sweaters. And I will do that. Thank you so much for the feedback. But just a reminder, maybe some of you don't know that I've already done a video like that about last year. So I will try to find that video and link it right underneath this video. Um, because that may actually be quite interesting for some of you who are interested in some of the sweaters that I've been knitting and wearing um, over the last couple of years and it may tide you over until I find the time and mind space and all of that to record a newer sweater video. Yeah, so should we just jump in? I mean, obviously the elephant in the room is the FO that I'm wearing today and you guys can you believe it? I finished my Ernest Cardigan. This is the Ernest Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I knit it out of a Norwegian yarn, which I picked um, specifically for this project when we were in Oslo. Um, this is Hillesvog Sölje, um, and the colorway is 2136. It's a really hard colorway to show because it just looks like a beigey gray but it has this super slightly mauve undertone to it. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, and it seems to look different every time I wear it and every time there's a little bit of different light, it just changes and it's just a beautiful color. Um, so I finished this thing. Last time I was still working on the body and um, talking about how I might want to change the bottom of the sweater. Um, in terms of the ribbon, all of that, and that's exactly what I did right after recording the last episode. I just wasn't making any progress on the body with the moss stitch and cables. It was just taking forever. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to modify the pattern a little bit, and that's what I did. And so I finished the body, and then I knit each sleeve in about one and a half days. The sleeves were so much fun, you guys. I know, sacrilege. Um, no one likes knitting sleeves and usually I hate knitting sleeves, but these sleeves were just in stockinette and I was just enjoying the yarn so much in the stockinette. And so they just kind of flew off my needles and here we are. So I won't stand up and show you the sweater, but if I am very organized, I will maybe even put in some photos of me wearing it right here. Um, and I thought I would talk to you about my modifications just a little bit. So in general, if you have questions about like designers, names, needle sizes, yarns, maybe you can't understand what I'm saying because I have a weird accent. Um, all of that can always be found in my project pages, which I link right underneath this video on YouTube as well. So then you can just click on the link and the project and you should be able to find at least some information there. I don't keep the most extensive project notes, but I try to have like the most important info there. 
So what did I do in regards to this cardigan? Um, probably the most obvious change that I did is I decided to knit the sleeves in stockinette. So the pattern has you done the entire sweater in this um, kind of textured mustache. Why am I showing you this to you on the side where I have my hair? I don't know. Um, and there's even some people who did the whole thing in stockinette besides the cables. And if I knit this again, that's what I will do just because then I would knit this uh, twice as fast. So that's something that in the future I may actually do. I may do, so, uh, do a similar sweater, but only have the cabling, which is both on this collar and also on the back and do the rest in stockinette. But like I said, for this version, I just did the sleeves in stockinette, which was pretty easy to adapt. You just kind of had to figure out when you start the raglan, where are, are, are the stockinette sections going to be and where is going to be the moss stitch. Um, besides that, partly because I just didn't even think to read the pattern, I didn't do any of the shaping, so I didn't do any waist increases or decreases. I just knit the um, sweater straight down and I think for my body type that works pretty well. I mean sometimes when I do sweaters I will do some um, decreases un under the bust, but I think I've never done like a proper like decrease and then increase again. And it just kind of, I think it suits me and my style and everything pretty well. So when I realized that I never even thought about reading the pattern um, for those instructions, I didn't really mind. Um, and also um, the pattern at the bottom, it usually ha only has a little bit of, uh, I think, a, was it a one by one rib at the bottom, just a tiny bit. And I wanted like a wide panel of ribbing at the bottom. So I did a three by three rib both um, around the entire um, bottom of the sweater and also on the sleeves. I just like that look. I just thought it was more what I wanted, so that's what I did. Um, and then I just did the length um, how I liked it. Um, I'm really sorry, I know that must be a little bit frustrating, but I tend to not really read sweater patterns once I split for the armholes and then do my own thing. I also did my own sleeve decreases, which I always do, not because I don't like what is in patterns, I just don't want to read it, because I kind of know how to shape things for my body, and therefore I would, there's no point in me going like, how long do I need to knit this sweater according to pattern, because I don't want it to be right according to that pattern, but I want it to be the right length according to my body. So I realize that may be a little bit frustrating if you're trying to I don't know, maybe do the same thing, but I always encourage you guys to play around with your sweaters and I definitely use patterns more like recipes and places to then modify than anything else. I think that's pretty much it in terms of what I did with the sweater. Um, the yarn, I love it, um, especially the stockinette. I don't know what it is about it, but can you see how fuzzy it is? It's just beautifully woolly and fuzzy. I will say this is not a soft yarn. Um, I personally love it, but even for me, it's a little bit itchy because this collar goes pr pretty much right up on your neck. So it's definitely, it's a rustic sweater, um, but I personally really, really like it. Also, the light is suddenly coming in. It's a really weird, gloomy day, and now I look like a ghost. But we will just go with it because I'd rather have like a lot of light than no light at all, which is very likely because um, this weather has just been so dark and dreary for days and days. I can't even remember the last time I saw the sun. So I will take a little bit of light. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm super happy to have this thing done. I've been wearing it all the time. Um, and thank you to everyone who left some lovely, lovely comments when I posted some photos of this on Instagram. I never get around to answering everyone, which goes for a lot of comments and stuff as well, but I really, really appreciate you guys. All right, shall we move on to some works in progress? The light is really, really annoying me right now, but we will just ignore it and keep going. So let's talk about some socks. Um, I am still working on the um, 
Solstice Sunset Socks, which is a pattern by Flock Fiber Studios. And apparently I just have like rogue sock needles in my bag. Um, I showed these to you last week and I've made quite a bit of progress on it. I feel like I'm not, that this isn't a very fast pattern, but then when I look at what I've done, I'm actually doing okay. So it's kind of hard to show because the pattern tends to scrunch up a little bit because it's got some ribbing and some slip stitches. But this is the pattern. It's a really fun slip stitch sock pattern. It is very memorizable. And as you can see, I'm knitting these two at a time from the toe up. So as with a lot of sock patterns, I only really looked at the chart. So I can't tell you anything else about this pattern. I just wanted to find the chart and um, yeah, I'm just knitting along happily. Um, what can I tell you? I just love how these stitches are looking. Um, how cool is that effect? I find it very hard to find patterns that go with speckled or sometimes even variegated yarns, but I think this works really well. It's a really, really fun sock. And if you want to see the opposite side, this is what it looks like in stockinette. You can definitely see these are fraternal socks. Um, the reason for which is that it's indie dyed yarn, which just sometimes has different amounts of color on different parts of the skein. And the way I tend to wind my yarn when I do two at a time is I end up knitting from um, opposite ends of the skein. So my two yarn balls I am knitting, I think, from the center. Oh yeah. So if I had then started to knit from the outside of the cakes, I would have basically started from the same point in the yarn and these socks would have been more similar. But oh well, I like to knit from center pull balls. These look kind of messy, but they work. Um, the yarn is some beautiful, beautiful yarn from Das Mondschaf in her Pegasus base which is a merino nylon, but it's a very, very soft merino nylon. And the colorway is Butterfly Effect, which is a movie that I used to love when I was like 14, 15, I think. So yeah, um, I've just been knitting on these every now and then um, while working. <laughs> well, I, have, I work a lot from home and I will always have like some kind of knitting project, mostly a sock on my desk and then if I'm on the phone and I don't need to type anything and I don't need to be hyper-focused, I will just knit a row or two. And turns out I do get quite a bit of knitting done that way. As usual, um, for all of my socks, 2.25 millimeter needles, which is a US size of one. And I always do 64 stitches unless I tell you otherwise. Next up is, of course, my sweater, which will undoubtedly blow out the camera even more um, and this is my bright red Madeleine Tosh sweater shall I show you a yarn label first shall we repeat what happens every week where I go don't find the label I have one this week who would have thought so the yarn that I'm using for this sweater is Madeleine Tosh um, Tosh Merino Light in the Blood Runs Cold colorway. I picked this up. This is a singles yarn, which I would never, <laughs> never knit a sweater in a single ply yarn, except that I'm doing it now because I really like the color and it was only there in single ply, so I don't follow my own rules apparently. Um, I talked about the sweater in length at length um, in recent episodes, so I will keep it short. Essentially, I am using the Robin sweater pattern, which is by Jose Paca, um, for the neck shaping and raglan increases. But of course, I had to modify it because my name is Julia and I apparently modify everything. Um, and I'm just using this as a recipe for a top down plain bright red sweater. So the original pattern has striping and all kinds of things. It also has more like a bat wing sort of sleeves. But of course I had to modify, so it's essentially just a plain red sweater and I love it. So I'm still working on the body. I think I have about maybe three more inches to go and then I will start the ribbing. I thought about adding some kind of texture or pattern or something in terms of interest 
um, onto the bottom of the sweater so I thought about maybe doing some lace um, my best idea I think was to do some sort of feather and fan maybe with garter stitch at the bottom but I think part of that is that I feel like it's too boring in terms of knitting content and everything to just knit a plain red sweater like this is the equivalent of a stockinette sock just in sweater form but then, really, I want a plain red sweater and I'm enjoying it, so I think I should probably just go with my gut and knit a plain red sweater and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Like, I hate it with, when other podcasters always apologize and feel like they have to do something more interesting or whatever. Like, I hate it when, when other people do that because I just generally think anyone should do whatever makes them happy. But apparently I'm in the same trap this time, so I haven't quite decided, but I think I'm pretty sure I'm just going to leave this plain, just plain it, ribbing, sleeves, and oh my gosh, I can't wait to have this done. I tried this on yesterday <laughs> after wearing this, which is quite scratchy, and oh, I, I didn't even want to take it off anymore. This really has the perfect fit, which I am eternally grateful for. I love the neckline. I chose the Robin neckline because it is a bit of a lower scoop neck and it just it just looks and fits so nicely if I may say so myself. And this is just a sweater that I will wear so much and so I can't wait to have it done. I'm even thinking about doing this just with like three quarter length sleeves and have it more like a top snatch sweater. Because I think that would be very, very wearable. I mean, it's not going to be the warmest sweater, but sometimes it's nice to have a light sweater. And so, yeah, I could see myself doing that, but I haven't quite decided yet. So that's where we are with that. Um, very happy with it. Um, I'm alternating skeins using the helical knitting method. So by now I've basically... Um, used parts of all three skeins. I have three skeins of yarn which will be plenty and I will probably have quite a bit left over as well. So that is that and um, the last project that I have to show you today um, is a pair of socks that I cast on yesterday because ironically I was watching um, Kristen of the Woolen Vine podcast and she was talking about sock knitting and sock mojo and she doesn't even knit socks very much but I was like now I want to knit socks so I went to my stash and picked out some yarn and I'm not sure if I talked about this but I'm trying not to buy any yarn at the moment um, ever since booking a holiday because god knows I shouldn't be buying any yarn um, it hasn't been very long but I'm actually really enjoying picking stuff from my stash and sometimes like the yarn that I picked out this time um, to knit this pair of socks, it's probably not the thing that I would buy right now. It's probably not the first sort of choice if I had like any skein of yarn available to me right now, but it's actually kind of fun to use up what I have because I have so much yarn. So it feels good to use up stash. So this is what I'm knitting up. Um, how, how pretty does the cake look? Can I just say that? Um, this is a German sock yarn from Tausend Schön Wolle um, in the colorway Liebelei. And the Germans amongst you, I'm sure, know this yarn. It is one of, in my opinion, the best quality and best price point in the United Yarns that you can get in Germany. They have different types of sock bases and I tend to always just buy their like virgin wool and um, nylon base, but it is such a nice base. I think I've talked about this in my really old sock review um, videos because um, I think this yarn was the first ever indie dyed yarn that I used to knit a pair of socks and I still have them because they just last really well, but it's still a really soft yarn. It's much softer than your usual sort of run-of-the-mill um, commercial virgin wool yarn. It's just beautiful. Um, so yeah, I picked out this skein and I really loved it in skein form. I kind of really love it in the cake. And then when I started knitting with it, it was a lot brighter than I thought and I really wasn't sure about it. So. This is what it looks like and now that I'm a little bit further along I really actually quite like it. Um, 
I used to knit a lot with like pooling yarn that does a sort of like striping effect and I used to like it and then I kind of I don't dislike it but I'm not so interested in it, in it anymore but again this was something I thought about putting it back in stash um, but I decided to just knit it up and I'm really happy with it so this is a sort of stash knitting that I really enjoy so I only cast this on last night but I knit a 2x2 cuff um, and then just a stockinette leg which in hindsight why didn't I do a 3x1 rib I would have preferred that so much more but I didn't think about it and I just wanted a non-pattern sock um, that I could pick up in between my other pair which I just showed you which just feels very slow so then I did a Curtis Stitch Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which I just finished, and I am onto the foot of the first sock. So this is where we are. Um, like I said, I really wasn't sure about it at first, if I liked this bright color scheme. Like, it looks much brighter than in the skein. But I'm starting to like it, and I'm not sure if this may be a gift for a certain person in my family, or it may just stay with me. I'm not sure yet. I will only really have to decide when I put in the toe because if it goes to my grandma, which I'm thinking about for Christmas, then I will just have to make the foot a little bit shorter and I think it will just fit her just fine. So yeah, that's another sock project. Apparently I have a lot of sock mojo or should I just say, I mean I've been finishing quite a lot of stuff, especially quite a lot of big projects. So I'm definitely in a mood to cast on a lot of things. Like I think right now I have five works in progress, but one of them is my shawl, my Kyler shawl, which is almost done. So really, if I work on it, which I'm thinking about working on it this week, and then I could finish it for the next podcast, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. So because I have so little, so few works in progress for my standards, um, also, one of those projects is my hand-spun sweater, which is kind of in hibernation because I just don't feel like another cabled sweater right now and the yarn is making me sneeze, so I'm a little bit undecided about that. So because of that, I've been thinking about what to, to knit next. And I found a pattern that I really liked by accident today when I stumbled across um, Isolde Teague's um, Instagram page. And I think pretty recently she came out with a new Fair Isle hat pattern, which is called the Cairn Gorm hat. I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing that. But you can look it up. It's a beautiful color work hat. It's very, very simple color work. It would be a pretty fun and fast knit. And it's knit out of Rauma Finelgarin, which um, is the Norwegian yarn which you may know is a lot, of, a lot of people are using it at the moment. It's a really nice color work yarn. This is the label. And I have like two bags of Rauma Final Garn in my stash. And I have a lot of like single skeins from leftovers from other projects because I've knit quite a bit of Final Garn, I think. So just before um, starting this podcast, I thought it might be fun to pick out some colors and show you what I'm thinking about. So um, it basically needs like one 50 gram ball of a main color and then just very, very little of two other colors to have some fun color work patterning. I think Zolda does hers in like a light gray, dark gray and a red, which looks really, really nice. So I also picked a light gray for my main color, which is this one. And this is left over from my stripy pullover which I decided uh, designed and knit in the summer so quite recently and I have one skein left over so that's perfect I also have a little bit left over of my contrast color which I use for that sweater so I'm kind of tempted to use these two and then the question is what do I do with my third color so I could of course just go with a gray which I mean that could be very classic kind of boring but classic I should also say that this is the color of my coat. So I'm trying to knit more things that go with my coat and I think that would be really good. Then I thought I could do this. I mean, I would only use a very small amount of this anyways. So I don't really mind cutting into um, 50 gram balls because I will probably need like five grams. But then again, it's very pink all of a sudden. 
Or, of course, I could go with a black. I'm not even sure where this came from. It doesn't have a label, but I'm about 99% sure it's also Fino Garin, and if not, it feels exactly the same. So this would be very classic, obviously. Or I could do this and use like an olive green, which kind of changes everything, doesn't it? So I really haven't decided. Um, that's just kind of what I'm thinking right now. I mean, this is a nice color palette, but then just like a little pop of pink is also really fun. And I mean, I bought the pattern so I could knit it like three or four or five times. And I'm actually thinking if it turns out to be a fun knit, which I'm expecting it will be, and if I get gauge, it would be a really fun sort of Christmas gift knit as well. I haven't really committed to any Christmas gift knitting, well, I have kind of, but not really. So I'm trying not to make myself do all the crazy gift knits, but well, it's just something I'm thinking about right now and I thought it might be interesting to you. Maybe I should talk to you about my Christmas knitting plans because I don't have much content anyways, because once again, I have not been buying yarn. I mean, yay. Um, yeah, so for Christmas, what do I need to knit? Well, Kai has his birthday coming up soon, but I've already finished his hat, which I have just hidden away here. So his hat is all done. I talked about it in a previous episode. That's all finished. Kai does want a pair of socks for Christmas, so that makes one gift knit to do. I have made socks for Kai's entire family already. So they're all done. I just need to wrap up the socks and that's amazing. Theoretically, my pink sock, which I just showed you, could be a Christmas gift for my grandma, so that's done, in theory. And also, if I don't manage to knit her one, she has so many pairs, it won't really matter. I know I need to knit a pair of Mercury socks for my middle sister, because she loves Mercury socks, which is kind of annoying because I didn't really enjoy knitting that pattern. It's a free pattern, it looks really pretty, but I just didn't really enjoy the process. But she's been non-stop telling me that that's what she wants. I mean, I was giving her a full-blown um, hand-knit sweater. And she was like, no, I don't want that. I want Mercury socks. So apparently I'm doing that. Which then kind of lends the question, do I want to maybe knit another, a pair for my other sister as well? Or I, maybe I do want to knit just something for my other sister as well. So that's kind of three gift knits that I should be doing. Um, definitely the socks for Kai and my one sister. And the other one, I don't know. I mean, I could also knit her some gloves, maybe some like color work mittens, a hat. Uh, she would probably like pretty much anything as long as it's somewhat modern. So that's what I'm thinking right now. And then if I suddenly fall in love with knitting hats or whatever, I would just give everyone hats and that's something I might do, but I'm not forcing myself to do. I also have a two and a half, almost three year old niece, so I could always knit her something, but that's kind of difficult because I never see her, so I have no idea about how big she is, even for her age and all of that. So that's always a bit of a gamble, and I'm not sure if her parents love hand knits. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking in terms of Christmas gifts and Christmas knits. Talking about Christmas knits, obviously I need to have my red sweater finished for Christmas, which I don't think will be a problem, but I do want to wear it on like Christmassy occasions because I just think it's a very, very fun Christmas sweater if it needs to be. Um, and there was something else that I was thinking about for Christmas knitting and now I can't remember. But yeah, that's kind of the idea for me right now. Um, you may remember that I used to do a lot, of, lot more Christmas knitting in the past. For example, last year I knit each of my sisters a sweater. I'm not doing this, that again. I'm not saying I will never do that, but I'm not doing that again this year. Um, and it really just kind of depends on my time as well. And now we are also moving into life in general, I guess. But generally, I mean, I'm sure most of you can relate to that. Like the pre-Christmas time, and it's only like five weeks until Christmas now, or six weeks. I think it's five works week, five work weeks, maybe it's six. Um, it's not very long until Christmas and those weeks before Christmas, in my experience, always tend to be really stressful at work, which 
I hate because I love the Christmas time and I love everything about Christmas. Um, I'm not religious, but I just love like all the Christmas spirity things and Christmas markets and Christmas drinks and Christmas food and Christmas knitting. Um, but it seems that this year my work is slowing down substantially, starting pretty much now. So if I can keep it up, I may actually have a lot more time than I usually have. So I have a lot more knitting time. So that's what I'm thinking, um, lots of possibilities, which is also why I'm allowing myself to go a little bit more rogue in terms of casting on all the things, because it seems that right now I will actually have a little bit more time and a little bit less stress, which will be just super nice. So let's hope that goes as planned and I won't be here in two weeks telling you guys, oh my gosh, it's the worst, I have no time, so stressful. No, not, not this time. Let's just for one time have like a relaxed Christmas period. Anyways, that was my ramble about Christmas knitting and sorry for those of you who are not big Christmas or holidays fans. Um, I realize that not everyone loves Christmas as much as I do. Anyways, now apparently my phone has decided to stop recording. Probably because the battery is very, very low. So I think it's a good time for me to say goodbye. Thank you so much though for watching, for maybe commenting, for following along the podcast, for maybe joining in the knit alongs in the group, which you can also find linked down below. As I said, I will try to link you the sweater video for those who are interested. And until then, until I see you again, thank you so much for watching. Happy knitting. Bye.